How's it going, people? Simon Slabber you, and it is Monday, which of course means update day. So, we have the BTS, I think it's two days ago for ports, and today is the release of ports. So, if you didn't know, where the hell have you been? Let's be honest. Uh, basically, another port update, and it's another really, well, it's a fairly chunky update, gotta be said. Uh, they're not adding more islands by the looks of it, but they are adding some extra little things on the side. So, what is actually being added then? Well, first of all, you'll be needing level 90 in Agility, Divination, and Dungeon Ewing in order to use the three new adventurers. So, that's the thing. Uh, there aren't any more islands, but uh, you go through these uh, doing the story mission, same as all the others, and eventually it'll ac accumulate into sending them in a big old group mission. And yeah, so guess massive chunks of crap for that. So yeah, that's how it is. Top of that, obviously, you've got the new level 85 weapons, the Katana and Wakazashi, because, you know, ninja-in. And you've got the Sea Singer's Wand and Orb as well. So, yeah. New 85 dual wield for melee and mage. And that's all from Pop. Can't complain at all, let's be honest. On top of that, to make Pop a little bit more useful, because, um... Well, I say useful. Uh, SA uh, give you more chances to do pop because if you're like me, you really can't be asked to go all the way over to Port Sarum every like eight hours or however long one of these voyages are these days. Now you can just grab the captain's log and you can just manage all your voyages from your captain's log so you can be anywhere in the world. Well, probably a bank, let's be honest. You're not going to carry that around with you. So, yeah, if you're new to pop, uh, as soon as you enter, pretty much you gain the captain's log. You'll want 90 in one of the like nine or fucking ten skills, wherever it is now. And you'll be given the captain's log, and you can do pop anywhere in the world. And yeah, I quite like that. Could be said, captain's log, quite nice. So the new adventurers, as I said before, require knight agility, divination, and dungeon Ewan. They're called the Tango, the Memory, and the Exile. Um, doesn't really mean much. The one new thing that's coming along with all of this stuff is an entirely new voyage type called Clue Voyages. Um, yeah, that's the thing. So basically, you'll be required to send. An adventurer to one of the islands and it'll be a clue that'll tell you and basically you've got to kind of guess which adventurer you need to send in essence if I'm reading this correctly so you receive a clue and it'll be like um Dave likes fish but his fish is raw he needs it to be cooked we it's over there in our island and basically you've got to pick the cook or whatever his name is the fisherman for the clue. I don't know what I'm on about. Basically, you get a clue voyage, it tells you some vague fucking hint, and then you just gotta guess which adventure needs to go there. If you guess correctly, then you'll move on to the next little section, and eventually, if you get all the way across the chain to the final island, you'll be able to get any number of awards, including Tengu cosmetic gear, trait removal for your captains, and stat boosts. Probably should have said that from the start, no. Uh, additionally, you can build a new map table improvement, uh, which will increase the likelihood of receiving these new clue voyages and it will give you hints as to the correct destinations to send them and the adventurers in tow. So as you said, the new level 85 weapons, that's the Tetsu Katana and Wakazashi and the Sea Singer Kiba and Magikai. Uh, these are the mage weapons and the melee weapons respectively, as you probably already figured out. On top of that, there's going to be some more scrimshaws. Uh, the Whopper Baiting will give you a chance to hook a Whopper fish. <laughs> Whopper. I, I just like it. Uh, yeah, give you a chance to hook a whopper fish, it'll get away, but you'll gain extra fish and XP as you grapple with it. So, um, it's kind of like, um, bonus XP for fishing, I guess. And then you've got Casket Salvage in Scrimshaw. It'll give you a chance to dredge up caskets of loot, including divine locations, gems, and port resources. Note that for each, there is a more powerful, non-tradable, superior version as well, same as usual, so um, if you can make them yourself, do the superiors. Additionally, there's a whole batch of Azure and Terracotta-based port improvements to build, including the new map table to go alongside it as well, so there's some improvements all across the board in POP. So, in essence, the POP update is three new adventurers requiring a Jolly Divination Dungeon Ewing. You'll have the new melee weapons and the new mage weapons. And you can now access Pop from anywhere in the world with your captain's log in order to send out adventures. They've added a new voyage called Clue Voyages, which you'll randomly get, and they'll give you some vague hints of where to send who where. And, um, yeah, pretty sure that covers it. Oh, there's also some aesthetic stuff you can change to buildings in Pop. So moving on then, you've got ninja fixes. So the ninja team has gone a bit bonkers apparently, and you can now exit your port via the portal, can be done with just one click instead of having to right click quick exit. 
The current ship selection is kept when moving between the voyages and ship interfaces. Meg's Lamp can give XP and Agility Divination and Dungeoneering now. Extra lifeboats are no longer offered once you have reached the maximum of 4. You can remove tutorials from random events. The effects interface closes when a ship is sent out. You can re-roll your captain in the crew interface. You can re-roll your special voyages in the voyage interface. Using the captain's log teleport function inside your port allows you to teleport outside. Uh, your current XP is displayed on crew and captains. The exit portal is no longer active during random events. And the Black Marketeer's random event has been tweaked, making it easier to complete. So there we go. If you need a pop guide, I made a very basic one a fair while ago, but it's pretty much still applicable now, except for it doesn't have the new requirements of these fellas, pretty much. So, there is that. So, other news. Uh, love the Orb of Oculus? Well, there's now a selfie mode. Ah, oh, go kill yourself, Dragax. Jesus Christ. Uh, Modley's running a Soul Wars event from... 5 PST or 1 UTC. I have no idea which of those are, so there we go. Is in World 44. If you like Soul Wars, have a gander. And other than that, you've got patch notes. But before we get into that, something major. Membership price changes. I'm not sure if any of you realise this yet, but this is the thing. So we talked about this a while ago when they first mentioned it, but now we have the official pricings and some other tiny bits of information. So, starting off, if you've been a member from a long time ago, your membership is still costing you £3.20. That will not change. The only case it'll change is if you lose your membership for anything over 14 days. Same as if uh, you got your membership after that and it went up to £4-ish in order for a month's membership. It'll stay at £4 per month as long as you keep your membership and there isn't more than a gap when you don't have membership for 14 days or more. So yeah. Basically, as long as you've been a member for a long ass time, you'll keep paying the prices you paid originally as long as you don't lose your membership for more than 14 days before you reactivate it. If you go past the 14 day mark, then you'll be put to the same prices of any other new players. So right now, if you was to become a member, then it'll be cost you six British pounds or sterling. It'll basically cost you ten dollars, it'll cost you nine euros, it'll cost you twelve Australian dollars, holy shit, and ten Canadian dollars. And lucky Aussies. Uh yeah, the bonds as well are also gonna be increased in price. So yeah, unfortunately. But the bonds aren't massively more expensive, I don't think. Uh, it's £3.60 or $6 or €5 Euros or 7 Australian dollars or $6.20 Canadian for one bond. The bonds will be still giving you the same thing, so it's 14 days of membership, 195 room coins and 15 treasure hunter keys, although I think you get more room coins. Or am I um, going a bit mental? Seems a bit more. I don't know. Read the way, there you go. So uh, the membership price is going up. If you've been paying for your membership for a long time, then you are still restricted to whatever you was paying once upon a time ago. It's not going to change unless you lose your membership for 14 days or more. So all in all, not bad. For the best value, you can check out the Premier Club offer. And that'll give you up to a year's membership straight off the bounce. So you can basically just pay that, which I think is about £52. And that'll pay for the year, something along those lines. And on top of that, you'll gain bonuses such as a massive chunk of extra benefits and all the rest of it. So here you go. This is the Premiership Club if you don't actually know what this is. Uh, you can buy a bronze version, which is three months membership. It'll give you 20k free bonus loyalty points. You'll gain an exclusive Lava Hood and a tier 5 aura known as Dwarven Instinct. And the Dwarven Instinct you can activate for an hour a day and find hidden chests on your adventure. The next set is the silver, I should say how much the bronze is, bronze is £14.50, the silver is £27.50, this gives you 6 months, 50k free bonus lol the XP, the lava hood again, the dwarven instinct aura and additional daily key on your treasure hunter, plus the ability to change your skin colour to grey, if um, that's your thing. And last is the gold benefits which is a 12 month membership and this is £52.50. That's 150k free bonus loyalty points, the Lava Hood, Dwarven Instinct Aura, the additional daily key on the Treasure Hunter, you can now turn your skin colour grey or onyx. You also gain the Lava Wings, a pet by the name of Lava Hawk. You gain access to the VIP Premier Club Only World Access, 
the Premier Club only forum, an in-game badge, a forum badge, the Premier Club exclusive Q&As, and some prepared promotions which will happen throughout the year of 2015. Uh, basically, those things are, um, well, the cosmetic items, typically, that just come around randomly. And additionally, if you buy any of these through PayPal, then you'll also gain the Samurai outfit and the Kirin pet. And that is pretty much the Samurai outfit there, and there's the Kirin pet. So there we go. You probably already know about the Premiership, but I figured I'd go over it since they've changed the prices on month-to-month -month membership. Or the going to. And these changes will be going from the 1st of March, so yeah. There we go. So the price of bonds and membership is going up. So last but not least on this lovely, lovely Monday afternoon, I suppose. Oh, fucking hell. Morning's disappeared. Uh, patch notes. So graphical-wise, the bright bloom effect has been re-added to Glacial Boots as per player feedback. An issue with the running animation of the Meerkat Familiar has been fixed. The equipped god capes are now removed from the player's avatar when destroyed from the worn equipment interface. Moving on to skills and minigames, the pickaxe provided in the Tox Ket Dill fight in Dominion Tower now functions correctly against the creature. Probably a good thing. Moving on to quests and achievements, a new history book has been added for the Black Knight's Fortress to replace some of Sir Owen's dialogue. It can be stored in the player owned house bookcase. Fair enough. Uh, the quest starts screens of Ghost Ahoy in search of the Maya Key, Haunted Mine, and the One Small Favour have been updated to reflect combat level calculation changes. A typo on the Oak Brazier used during Anacra's Lament has been fixed. A grammatical error previously seen in the post quest chat with 50 ships moves Mufasa. <laughs> when reclaiming the pet has been fixed, Mufasa. Mufasa! A typo in the branches of Dark Maya Quest has been fixed. Uh, miscellaneous stuff. Players can now use the join feature via the clan chat and friends chat interfaces. The XP gained pop-up is no longer displayed over the life points icon in the legacy mode. Iron Man players can no longer use the book of chart to light other players' logs. Visitors to an Iron Man's player house can no longer light their altar burners. It is no longer possible to prevent other players from attacking each other by using a member's weapon in free-to-play worlds. A Viking boat in Relic has been renamed to the Fremnik boat. The sign or portent of death will no longer deal damage to opponents when they are immune to damage. Rework the new poll notification system so it displays less intrusively. Choosing to visit the game guide while climbing over the wilderness ditch will now load the correct page. A reference to steel nails as members objects has been removed. The name of Pharaoh Sandals has been corrected in the wardrobe interface. A spelling error in the Scarborough's research book has been fixed. The adventurous log entry for receiving Torak's hammers no longer states hammers. Fair enough. Moving on to the ninja fixes. Uh, the buff timer will display minutes instead of hours when a buff is over 60 minutes left. Several cooking animations have been updated including churning butter, picking wheat and operating the windmills hopper. Combination potions can now be stored with a beast of burden. That's quite a thing. Unfired and unstarted ruined Urns can now be stored in a beast of burden. Unfired and unstarted ruined urns. We, yeah, fair enough. More titles will now show how they are unlocked and when selected from the titles interface. Players will now receive meerkat pouches in noted form after completing a treasure trail. Some old animations for scenery outside a house south of the Grand Exchange has been updated. Players can now teleport while metamorphosized. Metamorphosize? Metamorphosed. Sure, it's metamorphosized now. Either way, the mage ultimate ability, you can now teleport while that's active. Uh, moving on to the engine, and the final one of the piece world map links to other maps no longer get blocked in HTML5. <laughs> oh, HTML5, you funny bugger. So, all in all, that is pretty much everything coming out this Monday. Uh, there's so many good things in here. Mufasa. So until next time, people, I will catch you all later. Actually, no, before I piss off and leave, um, coming up this week, I don't know, uh, the third episode of Complete RS is coming soon. Uh, surprisingly, got quite a lot done. Don't ask me how I managed to do that, but yeah, I had a bit of a freak out and did stuff. <gasps> Unbelievable, I know, but it happens from time to time, occasionally. Um, I've probably got some other stuff to check out, but I can't remember what the hell it was. Either way... Uh, mystery week, see what happens. Who knows? Fuck it. <laughs> Until next time, people, I'll catch you all later. Have a good one. Oh my god, I got a medal. <laughs>